Well, the car, first of all, is a, a little, it's deliberately cute looking. It's a small city type car. It's going to be two seater and uh, it's got a, a kind of a smiling face to it. It's designed to really look non-threatening to help the acceptance of these vehicles in urban environments. The front is very pedestrian friendly. The windshield is made from a flexible type of plastic instead of glass so that if the worst did happen then a pedestrian would hopefully come off a little better in an accident. Uh, the technology being used on them is an extension of what we've already seen on Google's driverless cars. They've modified SUVs and hybrid cars before and they've almost become a common sight around the company's headquarters in Silicon Valley. Uh, it's an array of sensors and computer technology. This time they're just taking it a step further. Now you're saying it's a common sight at the company's headquarters but certainly not a common sight at all on the main roads. Uh, where can you drive them at the moment? Where, where are they legal? Well, uh, that is still a, an interesting question. There, there's a whole patchwork of legality. A couple of states here in the United States have introduced laws so that these cars can be used on the roads. Google is able to test their driverless cars in California, but in order to test these new ones that don't have pedals and steering wheels, they're going to have to fit pedals and steering wheels to them, and they always have at least two test drivers in each car all the time. Uh, but they, I would guess that they would hope with this sort of new uh, vehicle they could push this technology forwards and you know start having some of these conversations about the law and right. who's liable in various situations to really advance the technology.